The original kinetic Luna was born out of a necessity to provide personal transportation in a yet stirring India. With its combination of utility, cost effectiveness and simplicity, it proved to be quite successful. And nearly two decades after its discontinuation, it still enjoys a cult following in small circles across the country. However, Kinetic believes it is now time for the Luna to return. So this is the 21st century reincarnated Kinetic Green E-Luna. Design-wise, the E-Luna is a pakka moped, although you could argue it isn't technically a moped because of the missing pedals. Depending on who you ask, its design will be a good or bad thing. Personally, I think it looks quite cute, and its boxy looks help it stand out in the ocean of two-wheelers that are forever swarming around Mumbai's busy streets. With an EV, one of the first questions we get asked is, what's the range? So let's address that right out of the gate. The claimed IDC range of the E-Luna is 110 km. However, we only managed to cover 61.7 km. This was done while I was riding solo and keeping pace with normal city traffic. To be honest, that number left me wanting a little bit more. And if you choose to load up the E-Luna and use it, which I suspect will be quite common amongst its customer base, that number will drop down a little bit further. There are two variants of the E-Luna on offer, X1 and X2. The former comes with a smaller 1.7 kWh battery and the latter is what we have in front of us today. The claimed IDC range for the X1 is 90 km. However, going by our real-world range test, you can expect the range number to be in the mid-50s. This is a very spartan machine. As such, it gets a simple LCD display that shows you all the relevant information as well as all the pertinent telltale lights. However, on a sunny day, it can be a little hard to read them. Funny enough, this is the first EV we've seen that comes with an actual fire symbol on the display. Yes, that is meant to inform you if things are going haywire in the battery pack and if there is a chance of a thermal runaway. Hopefully, no customer ever gets to see that symbol light up. The underseat storage area isn't big enough for you to carry the charger with you. Accessing this space is also more complicated than it needs to be as you need to unscrew two thumb screws before the pillion seat opens up. The E-Luna seats the rider in a very neutral riding position and it's quite spacious for both me and the pillion. However, the soft padding means you sink into the bare metal underneath quite quickly and it gets to be a little uncomfortable if you spend more than half an hour in the saddle at a time. The pillion foot pegs are also placed too far back for comfort, which means your passenger has to contort their lower limbs at a very awkward angle. Again, not a very pleasant thing. The E-Luna is built to a cost and that shows very clearly in the weak drum brakes and the budget suspension. The brakes are particularly weak and they need a strong torque to bring this 100 kilo machine to a halt. On Bombay's poor surfaces, the E-Luna struggles to absorb the bigger bumps and sends them straight through to your spine. This is something I notice when riding both with and without a pillion. It takes a while to get going, with particularly lethargic acceleration when accelerating from a dead stop. After 20 kph, things improve, but the throttle response is another area that can be improved. Taking a U-turn is particularly frustrating because the power doesn't come on when you want it to or expect it to. There have also been instances where the E-Luna has continued to surge forward despite the accelerator tube being shut. Top speed 2 is a speedo indicated 50 kph, which we verified with our V-Box to be just about 46 kph. That makes this one of the slowest registered two-wheelers you can buy in India today. On the bright side, the E-Luna is like a little mountain goat and climbs just about any slope or flyover you pointed towards. In fact, it has peacefully climbed over some slopes that prove too much for the more expensive Gen 1 Ola S1 Pro in its lowest eco mode. When it comes to quality, things are about as good as you'd expect from a machine at this price point. It's certainly not a deal breaker, but there is quite a lot of room for improvement. To sum up, the Kinetic Green E-Luna is a simple and utilitarian two-wheeler, much like its ancestor. But there is one crucial difference. Where the original Luna was much more affordable than a motorcycle, that is no longer the case. At Rs 74,990, it not only costs about Rs 10,000 more than the likes of the Honda Shine 100 and the TVS Radeon, it is vastly more expensive than its chief rival, the TVS XL 100, which starts at Rs 45,000. Ultimately then, the e-Luna will probably have a much higher rate of success in the e-commerce space. 
as far as private buyers are concerned, it will appeal to the niche that wants the form factor of a moped with the low running costs of an EV. Although, we're not sure how many such buyers are out there.